Hello? Okay. We're good. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, we're at Parshas Pekude this week. Um, as I mentioned to you, you know, this week was Chavzai and Adar. Oops, let me just move on over a little more. Better to the camera. Okay. So it's Parshas Pekude, and this is the time that we have this little um, vacancy because Vayaka was the last Sikh of Nun Beis, and generally the the, the Dvar Malchus Sichas that we were learning are from Nun Aleph, but the end of Nun Aleph from after the Chavches Nisan Sicha, which was in the end of Nisan. So we have this like in between period now. So I'm looking to learn other things that are inspiring and uh, particularly directed towards the auspicious Erev Hagaula that we're standing right now. So there is a very, very important sikha that the Rebbe spoke on Beis Nisan. So on number one, it's already a month before Nisan coming up, so we have to start preparing, and especially when we're expecting so much out of the month of Nisan, especially when there is such an Esoiris in the world. But also in addition to the idea that this week was Chavzai and Adar, when we it's the beginning of what later led to the second Chav Zayin Adar, which would later led to Gimel Tamas. So we understand that um, we need to increase chayos, life, and energize our Nasi. We have to energize the Rebbe. We have to give the Rebbe Chayim. There is on, you know, the, the Chav Zayin Adar and everything was a, was a what, however way you will interpret it and what it led to in Gimel Tamas, was at least to our physical eyes a diminishment in Chayim, in life. So this is a very, very special sicha of the Rebbe, where the Rebbe addresses this idea, that an amazing idea, that we Chassidim, we the Jewish people, are able to give Chayus and life to the Nasi, to our leader. So um, I'm going to read... Um, so again, this is in Sefer Hasichas Tashem Em Ches. Excuse me. Page 347. So the Rebbe begins with the idea. This is after the Rebetzin passed away. Um, so this is just about, uh, about a month, less than two months, but a month and a half after the Rebetzin's Histalkus. So the Rebbe has been talking a lot about the idea of Acha Yitin El Liboy, which it says that, the, that when something negative happens, the, the, those that are living should take to their heart. So the Rebbe says an amazing thing. It's so amazing. Just, just the perspective, the unbelievable, unbelievable insight that we get, even when you don't get far into a sicha, just a little bit, you see something so rich. The Rebbe says, we've spoken many times, that a Yid has to become more and more lebedic, more alive as he passes through life. Generally what happens is, a person is very alive when they're young and they're very youthful, so they're full, they're, they're, they're full of vigor in life. You start becoming, as I am, Yid, you start drying up, you start to wither. The Rebbe says that the concept of Acha Yid and Aliboy is that a Yid has to continuously intensify his life, his or her life, and become more alive and more alive. And every special occasion that happens in your life, for instance, a birthday or something like that, an anniversary or something significant that happened in your life, it's supposed to, and each year you get to that anniversary through your appreciation of your life and your koyach in your life and what your life is all about, it's supposed to add more life. You're supposed to become more alive as you're getting older, not less alive. And if this is true, the Rebbe says, regarding to individual lives of an individual person, how much more when we're talking about the Nasi of the Jewish people, the leaders of the Jewish people, how the events in their life make them more lebedig, make them more alive, that there is, has to be an Isophis Achayas, regarding the Nasi himself, the leader himself, and also regarding to his influence on his people. So a personal infusion of life and an infusion of life on the people that are connected to him. 
And therefore the Rebbe says that on Bey's Nisan, which has a double meaning, it's the yard side to Lula of the fifth Rebbe, of the Rebbe Rashab. And it's the first day of the Nesius, because Uba Hashemesh Vizara Hashemesh. When the sun sets, the new the sun rises. So as the moment that the Rebbe Rashab passed away, his son, the Friedrich Rebbe, became Rebbe. Comes out that Beis Nisan is the Haschalas and Nesius of the Friedrich Rebbe. So this day is this very powerful day, Beis Nisan, in the life of a Nasi, in both these Nasi, in the fifth and the sixth, and particularly by the Friedrich Rebbe, it's a very auspicious day, not just in his private life, but in his life as a Nasi, because this is the day of his inauguration of his Nesius. So this is a very empowering day, because in this day, it really contains everything that's going to happen in his next 30 years of his Nesius. It's all rooted in that first day. So that day, Beis Nisan, is very powerful. So therefore, every year when this day comes, we can understand that there needs to be a Hisafa in life, not Stama Hisafa in the Indian and the, in the Friedrich Rebbe's life, but in the Indian of life itself by the Friedrich Rebbe. That's the content of Sif Al. In Sif Beis, the Rebbe says, to further understand this in a deeper way, uh, to further, to, to in addition, and to, 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 to the connection between Cha Yitin El Liboy, in addition in life, regarding, particularly when we're talking about a Nasi. So regarding a, a, a Nasi, now what's an Inyi, what's Nasi? So next week in the Parsha, Parsha's Vayikra, the Torah is going to mention the idea that if a Nasi sins, Asha, Nasi, yeah, the Rebbe is not bringing, I'm just adding this here. This is not the quote from the Sikh. The Rebbe says when he talks about a Nasi. So according to Torah, the word Nasi doesn't mean a president, a leader, but it's referring to a Melech. And when the Pasuk is speaking about uh, a Nasi sinning, the Gemara learns out that a Nasi is someone who's the highest. Nasi means elevated. And that there's no one above him besides the Ebesh there. That means no other person, so that means he's the highest, the highest in the people, and that's the melech. So the word nasi is a melech. So when it comes to nasi, and we say that our rabbeim, and the Rebbe would say that the Rebbe is the nasi hadur, that means that there's no one above him. And besides the abish there, there's no one above him. Now, in regarding to the melech, which is the, the nasi, the melech, the Rambam says, when the Rambam defines a Jewish king, the Rambam says that the Melech, he doesn't say Dafka about a Jewish king, he says it about a king. That what's a king? A king who lave kol kahal Yisrael. He's the heart of the Jewish people, of the entire congregation. The heart. What is the meaning? So we always have to understand, what does it mean? Obviously not physically, he's not the heart of the people physically, but the content of a heart. What's the heart? The heart is the pump of the blood. The blood gathers, it's the blood headquarters. The blood gathers in the heart, and the function of the heart is to pump the blood. What's the blood? The blood carries the nefesh, the chayos nefesh. So the blood is like the life, life juice, life sauce, if you would call it. Nefesh. When you're saying that the blood, that the nasi is the heart, it means that he pumps life to his people. In other words, he is the soul of this entire nation, of his people. He is their energy. He's their life. He's their very, their very life. So what does that mean? More specifically, to appreciate the chidush of the Rambam by calling the Melech a leiv. He says it's brought down in Sfarim from the Rishonim. In Ara 14, he says it's the Rajbats. There's a Hasidish Rajbats. I think the free, one of the Friedrich Rebbe's Rabbeim was Reb Shmuel Betzal. We're not talking about, this is not him. We're talking about the Rashbats. This is one of the, Rish, the uh, Rishonim. So he says that the Rosh Tevis of the word Melech stands for, the acronym of the word Melech stands for Moyach Leiv Kaved, brain, heart, and liver. Which the Zohar refer, says about these three limbs that they are the dominant limbs in the body. They are the Shlitim. They are the governors of the body. The brain, heart, and the limbs. Now, if that's, we say that's what melech means, that means that a king is not just the heart, the king is also the brain, he's also the liver. But yet, when Rambam says the definition of a king, 
He doesn't say that the king is the moyach of the people. He specifies that the king is the lave of the people. So what is the significance of that? So the Rebbe says, let's do an analysis and a comparative analysis between the brain and the heart. Even though he mentions the, the, the liver, but he mentions it very briefly, so let's leave go with the liver. Let's just take a look at the difference between the brain and the heart. What's the function of a brain? The brain is the first place where the soul, the higher, the, the, the consciousness of the person manifests in the brain. So it's the seat of your consciousness, and from your brain, it's also the headquarters of the nerve system, which controls all the functions of the body. All the particular functions of the body, including our five senses that we have, it's all rooted in the brain. Chas v'shalom, there's a brain damage, a person can lose their sight, chas v'shalom, their, their, their ability to hear, even though there's no damage to the ear, but the damage was to the brain, it causes that kind of a damage. The brain is the controller of all the senses, of all the movements, of all the particular functions of the body. There, this is the control panel, if you can say. And what's the heart? The heart, as we said earlier, is the, the, the source, because both of them are vital organs. But what's the difference? The heart pumps the blood. And what's the blood? The blood is the juice of life, which is the soul itself. Comes out from here is an interesting thing. The brain is the director of the, of the experiences of the body, or the most specific functions and powers of the body. That's after there is a living body. Before the body can function and can experience, first of all, consciousness, and all the individual experiences of it, it first needs to be a living body, which needs, it needs to have a soul. The soul is delivered to the body, not through the brain. The awareness of the soul and the functions of the soul come from the brain. And that's why the brain is the one that directs and leads the body. But the heart is where the body makes the body alive. The body, and, other, and the Rebbe goes on to say that the heart, really in truth, the heart is life. It's life itself. And life is movement. Life is, is movement. The sign of something that's alive is if you see it move. Right? You check a heartbeat, you check movement, pulse, movement. Um, and that's why you see an interesting thing. The brain doesn't move. I mean, of course, there's brain activity, but externally, look at the brain. The brain is a stationary entity. It doesn't move. The liver doesn't move. The heart doesn't stop moving for a second because the heart is nefesh. The essence of life is the heart. The heart gives life to the body. How does the heart give life to the body? By giving blood to the body. What's the blood? It carries nefesh. So if we can re, re, reword this, it would be something like this. The heart, which is the nefesh, diffuses itself, gives its entire being into the body. It's not that the heart, see, the brain kind of sits on its own above and it influences the body. The heart itself is mispashit. It itself spreads into the body. Because the definition of the heart is life. Now the heart itself as an organ can't dissolve in the body because then you have no heart and you don't want to pump. But it's as if the heart is giving its very being by giving its blood, which is the heart itself, through the body. So what is the heart? Nefesh and soul. So when we look at a king, we can say a king, a king is of course the moyach. He is in charge of directing the entire country. He, all the affairs of the country. He needs to give it guidance. He needs to make the serious decisions. He needs to lead the nation into war. He needs to lead the nation into conquest. He has to lead the nation in the educational systems. He has to lead the economy. He has to direct the nation in which, and what, what are the policies and so on and so forth. And the same as a rebbe and a leader. He gives guidance and teaching to the generation. But the Rebbe is revealing to us over here something much, much, much deeper in the Sikh. And that is that a Rebbe, a Nasi, who is a Melech, he actually gives us life itself. We're alive. In what sense? In, in spiritual, for sure we understand that. Our entire umf and our chayas that's coming to us, comes to us through the neshama of the Nasi. He's the, he's the neshama of all the neshamas. That means he's their life force. 
And he invigorates us. Invigorates us. We're invigorated and have our very chayos and energy in everything that we do. Our moidani in the morning. Our Krishna Shalamita at night, our davening, our chesed, our kindness, our learning, everything is infused with vitality and energy and life. As a living Jew, we're alive from the Nasi. Now, of course, let's understand something. I mean, here the Rebbe doesn't say this, but I would add this on my own. There are, like it says in Tanya, there are those who are aware of that iskashrus and that bond, those that are not aware, but even those that are not aware are still being makabal, this energy. This life force. As the Rebbe says over here, while Derech Zeb and Nasa Yomelech, Lev Kol Kahal Yisrael, he's the heart of the entire people, Sha'al Yodoy Nasa Chayos Libnei, Hamshachas Chayos Libnei Yisrael. Life is coming from the people to the, from the, from the Nasi to the people. Now the Rebbe says, when it comes the day of the Haschalas Hanasiyos, the life energy of the Jewish people, which is the life of the Nasi, which is the life of the Rebbe, who is the king, needs to experience an upgrade. It needs to be elevated to a higher, deeper, more powerful life. More energy, more life, more alive. How more alive? We said earlier that the Nasi doesn't have anybody above him, but who? But the Abishter, but God. So how does the Nasi the life force, the, the nefesh of the people, the soul of the people, it needs to draw deeper in its connection to as the Rebbe refers to it as Chai HaChayim, the fountainhead of life. So the Nasi becomes deeper connected and unified with Chai HaChayim, with the fountainhead of life, which is the Ebersh there. And from there he translates that powerful, new, invigorating nefesh and life to his people. And that translates the Rebbe says, not only in spiritual life, but even in Chayim Gashmiyam. That means more physical life to his people. In our case, to the Jewish people. Simply more life, more bracha and everything. The life comes through the Nasi. In Tziv Gimel, the Rebbe said something which is particularly connected to this year. To a certain degree, to last year. But we would say, the Rebbe continues as Tziv Gimel, that this whole Indian is particularly emphasized that particular Beis Nisan. Because that particular Beis Nisan in Tashem Mem Ches, it turned out to be 68 years since the Friediger Rebbe became, uh, the, Rebbe, the Friediger Rebbe is Cholos Anasius. The Friediger Rebbe became Rebbe in Tafresh Pei. The Rebbe Rishab passed away then. The Friediger Rebbe became Rebbe in Tafresh Pei. And which was 18... Um, no, 1920. And I want to say 1920. We're holding out of Rish. Yeah, yeah, 1920. And um, then I took to Tashin Yud. So from, from, from 1920 um, until, oh, so from 1920 to 1950 is 30 years. So we know the Friedrich Rebbe was a Rebbe for 30 years. But the Rebbe says, well, the Rebbe is, however, talking in Tashin Memches which is in 1988. So from 1950 till 1988 is another 38 years. So 30 plus 38 is 68. Gematri Yachayim. So the Rebbe says, so it comes out that that year, Tavshem Memches, is 68 years, Gematri Yachayim, from the Friedrich Rebbe. So since it's a year of Chayim, so whatever we're talking about, increasement of life of the Rebbe, of the Nasi, this year it's even more emphasized. And then he says, he says, if you follow the, the method of learning of my father, which is Rebbe Levik, the Rebbe's father, we can be medayik in the word Chayim itself. Chayim itself is made up of two yuds and a ches and a mem. So you have the word mem ches and two yuds. And if you want to apply that to the Rebbe, says it, that too is accurate. Because we can take a look and see the free the Rebbe's life and divide it in two yuds and then 48. What are the two yuds? Two Yudzi says are the first 20 years of the Friedrich Rebbe's life where the Rebbe, Friedrich Rebbe was a Rebbe in Europe. Then the Friedrich Rebbe left Europe and came to America where he spent his last 10 years of his life. Now in America, the Friedrich Rebbe's Nesias, the Rebbe sees himself, of course, as an extension and a continuation of the Friedrich Rebbe. So the Rebbe says that the 10 years of the Friedrich Rebbe plus the 38 years until Tavshim Memches of the continuation of the Friedrich Rebbe after his Istalkos gives you 38. 
It gives you 48. So that's the memches of Chaim. More specifically, the Rebbe says, the significance of 48 is if you divide it in two. He says, first of all, it's gematria chayel. Chayel means strength. But in addition to that, he says, memches is divided, can be divided into two. Chav dalit and chav dalit. 24 and 24. Which is, comes from the word, v'samti katkei shem sheisayach. One of the nevuas regarding Mashiach, so Hashem says, I will make like a precious, I'll make your windows be made up of the special um, stone called katkeid. Chavdal, which is two words, chavdalid, chavdalid. Now the Rebbe says, if you take a look in Lakuti Torah, the meaning of katkeid, and was explained in all the Drusha Chassidus of all the other Rabbeim, you'll understand the significance of this idea of katkeid. And by looking in those places, you'll appreciate even more the significance of this, the Rebbe says, and, um, and in a manner than ten lachacham ve'yech kam oid, you can get more insight in it. So the Rebbe wanted us to look this up. What's really interesting is, there's something really, really fascinating about this. The Rebbe is now saying that the, 60, that the 68 years are is divided in two periods of 10 years, then it's 48, which is divided in two periods of 24 and 24. So someone already had mentioned this last year, because last year, Yud Shvat, not this year, Tavshin Mem, not Tavshin Ayin Tes, but last year, Tavshin, Tavshin, um, Yud Shvat, Tavshin Ayin Ches, was the same idea for the Rebbe. It was 68 years, because the Rebbe became Rebbe in Tavshin Yud, as soon as the Friedrich Rebbe is Talkus. Count 68 years, and you end up in Tavshin Ayin Ches. So he said then as follows, this is someone in Crown Heights discovered this, and I thought it was, someone put a voice note out last year, and it was very special, based on what it says over here. 24 and two, that you divide it in two periods of 10, which is two yuds. But the Rebbe, you see that. First 10 years, the Rebbe kind of was preparing Lubavitch, laying the gra- groundwork. Next 10 years, the main avoda of, of, of shlichus started, and those became very strong in those 10 years. But after the first 20 years, the Rebbe already, on his end, kind of was ready for Mashiach. That's why Tavshin Lamed, 20 years later, 1970, Tavshin Lamed, um, Yud Shvat, the Rebbe completed then the Sefer Torah Shal Moshiach. After that, from Tavshin Lamed, you had two periods of 24. From Tavshin Lamed till Tavshin Nun Dalid was 24 years. Lamed to Nun is 20, plus another four. And that was the Rebbe's one Kad. And then there was another Kad Kade from Nun Dalid till Ayin Ches is another 24 years. And what's interesting in the Kuti Torah, the Rebbe explains over there that the difference between 24 and the 24 is that the first 24 is representing an avoid of Momaila Lamata from up down. And the second 24 is representing an avoid of Momata Lamaila, which means more avoid of Bekayach Atzmoy, avoid on our own. That's what it says in the Kuti Torah. And since the Rebbe is pointing us to look in the Kuti Torah and we'll understand this better, it, he's telling us actually to take this Indian. So it's interesting, this is what this person pointed out. He says, well, we had 24 years after the Rebbe was already kind of already by Yemoisa Mashiach and he was trying to get us to it. So for 24 years, he was Mashpia Mashiach from above, Tul Nun Dalit. After Nun Dalit, he left us in this situation where we need to come to it and connect to it from within ourselves. Now he said this last year, but I think it applies to this year as well because very simple, because even though the Friedrich Rebbe passed away in Tavshin Yud, but the Friedrich Rebbe did not official, but the Rebbe did not officially accept the Nesius until the next year, Tavshin Yud Aleph. If we count the same Cheshbin from Tavshin Yud Aleph, we end up to Tavshin Ayin Tes. And in that way, we can make that very same Cheshbin as it applies to this year. But in any case, let's continue in the Sicha further. In Siv Dalet, the Rebbe says, to understand and to appreciate this even on a deeper level. So he says, um, by a Nasi, and this is just unbelievable what the Rebbe says in, in, in Siv Dalit, and that's all we're going to learn today. We're going to continue Be'ez Hashem next week. The Rebbe says like this, when, you, when, when the relationship between the people and the Nasi is on two, on two levels. Number one is that the Nasi is way above them. They have no relationship, no connection. He's 
in a manner of roimimus v'havdala. He's completely separated. As it says by a king, he's that he's head and shoulders above the people. And that's why they're called um. Um means, like the Alta Rebbe says, dvarim nefradim. They are completely separated from him. And they're, in a sense, so insignificant to the true greatness of who the king is, of who the melech is. And that we can see it from the Rebbe says, from the, from the Pasuk, where it says, Soim tasim alecha melech, you should put upon yourself a king. So the Gemara learns out, you should fear him, you should dread him, because he's so much beyond you. So this it represents a certain distance. On the other hand, if he is the heart of the people, you couldn't get closer than that. He's on the one hand the most removed, and on the other hand, he couldn't be more intimate. He's the heart. And the heart means, as I said earlier, a heart is not just an influencer. A heart itself becomes the life of the, of the body. It is the life of the body. If we are the people, we're the limbs of this great body, and a Rebbe is the heart, a Melech is the heart, that means he couldn't be closer to us. He is our very chayus. He's not contributing nice sichas, nice ideas, guidance, teachings. He is your breath, your life. Obviously, the Abishter is our life, but the Nasi Hadoyer is the, is, is the Neshama Klolis, that is the inner life force, the inner blood through which the Abishter's Chayus, which is the life of all of us, comes to each and every one of us. And watch this, so the Rebbe says. Just like the relation, if that's the case, let's not just see it as a one-way relationship, that the Nasi, the Melech, invigorates the, the heart, or the Nasi invigorates us, but it has to be a two avenue. It has to be, it has to go in two directions. Because the way the, 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 as much as the heart invigorates the limb, the heart, um, on the other hand, the heart is absolutely dysfunctional and unuseful without the limbs. Meaning to say that the limbs need to return the blood to the body. And they have to, that's the circulation, they have to pump. The heart pumps the life to them, they pump the life back to the heart. And without the limbs giving the, giving the, the body, the blood, circulating that blood back to the heart, the heart is kaput. That's the concept of Ein Melech B'loy Am. The king is, is dependent on his people, not just that he gets money from them, he gets support from them, he gets honor from them, he gets this or that. No, no, no. He gets his very life from them, in a sense more than anybody else. All the other entities, any other person, a private citizen is a private citizen. He has his own life. He has his, right? But the, the king, who's the heart of the people, if the people, the limbs, don't give him his blood, he has no existence, he has no life at all. His entire being is that he's their life force. So that, therefore, the Rebbe says, um, this is emphasized in a certain connection that people have uh, to their melech, in that when people see the king, the people call out and announce to the king, long live the king. Or Yechi HaMelech, which you see already, it comes from Tanakh, which the Yidin said re regarding to David HaMelech. Yechi HaMelech, long live the king. Which I'll be passionate, it's like, what, what does this mean, long live? Why, why, why are you blessing him long live? Uh, you say to the king, we love you, you're our master, we submit to you. Whenever you see the king, we submit to you. You're so great, whatever, say something like that. What do you mean, long live? What do you have to do with his life? And the answer is, yeah, we have to give him life. So when the, when the resounding powerful cry of the masses, thousands of people, cry in unison, and they say, long live the king, they're actually giving that energy. In other words, obviously it's not just a, a external slogan that they're saying. It's their deepest devotion and commitment that they are saying, we live for you, our king. We know you are, you are our life, and we live our lives 
for you. You're our passion. You're our fire. You're our soul. And we're devoted to you completely. And in that, we're giving you life. So the Rebbe is saying, we actually give the Melech life in that, in that, through, through that announcement of the Yechia Melech. So in Sifhei, the Rebbe now concludes, and he says, based on, I mentioned this, I would say Sif Dalet, but I didn't realize that, I meant, I didn't realize, I didn't see the hay over there, it's Sif Dalet and hay. So the Rebbe says, based on that, we'll understand. When it comes to Chaim Shana, of the Nesiyos of the Friedrich Rebbe, so, um, in addition to this, that now we are Zaycha, since the Friediger Rebbe has an upgrade of life, and he's infusing us with extra life, since, so the same is also, we need to reciprocate and give life to the Friediger Rebbe. How do we do that? So let me read it inside. This has to be read inside. The people of the generation affect an addition. Added life. By the Nasi of the Dar. Like, like it says, and in simple words. After there is a shlemus of Chayim Shana to the Nesios of the Friediger, of the Friediger Rebbe, Tzarech Lies Heisafa Ikris Be'inyan Achayim. After the Friedrich Rebbe has now reached 68 years, we, there has to be an added Indian of life. We need to make him more lebedic. By the work of the people, where the people announce, long live the king. What is the teichen of this announcement? That the time has arrived as this is applied to the Friediger Rebbe, it means that when we are saying to him, Yechi HaMelech, long live the king, it means the time has arrived that he should spring to life. The time has come for Hakitsu Veranu, they will wake up and they will sing, those that are dwelling in the earth. Who is that in this case? Kavoyit Kedish Vesmoy Rechami Admer Nasi The Friediger Rebbe is the Nasi of our generation. Va'ad, and including, and until, and including, what else has now arrived the time? David That he should wake up and he should sing David Malka Mashiach. Which is very interesting. So the Rebbe is saying that there needs to be an addition of life regarding the Friediger Rebbe. By what? The Nasi Ador. That we are saying that the time has come, Yechi Amelech, that it's time that the king should come to life. That's the Friediger Rebbe. And it's interesting now, the, the Rebbe says, Shoich offer those who dwell in the earth. And then the Rebbe says, it also includes, Hakitsu Verananu David Malka Mashiach. So it's really, I'm stopping over here and I'm asking a simple question. Who does the Rebbe mean when he says, Hakitsu Verananu David Malka Mashiach? Is he referring to David Amelech from way back then? We don't pass in that David HaMelech is Mashiach. Actually, the Gemara says that David HaMelech will be there when Mashiach will come, but he will be like the second, the second, the, the, the second in command. Mashiach is an anacle of David HaMelech. He's not David HaMelech himself. When we use the term David Malka Mashiach, we're actually talking about Mashiach Tzadkenu. So the Rebbe is saying, so, but hold it. What do you mean a Kitsu Verananu? Regarding Mashiach Tzitkenu, we know that what? That Mashiach Tzitkenu, the Rebbe always pushed, turned, turned us to the Rambam, is a Yamoid, he's a Melech, he's a living king amongst the Jewish people, and so on and so forth. How suddenly does the Rebbe say, the time has arrived, Hakitsu Verananu, the Friediger Rebbe, and Adiv Hakitsu Verananu, David Malka Mashiach. It seems like, if we have to, we have to exp that the Rebbe is alluding to that there needs to be an awakening, and it's interesting, he doesn't say Shaykh Ne Afar in this case. Friedrich Rabbi says Shaykh Ne Afar. He says, a kitsu, an awakening, because Shaykh Ne Afar is usually a term we say that for someone who Mamish passed away. He says, a kitsu, Venanan, it's not a kitsu, it has to wake up, Venanan and sing of David Malka Mashiach. Through what? Through the Hachraza, which means pumping life, Pepoil, to the Nasi Hadar on two levels. The Friedrich Rebbe, the Giyazman, 
עדה, כי צוברנה נו דוד מלכה משיח. וזהו, דה רבי סס, גם מה שמרישם באיקפסא דה משיח, this is also this that we've been מרישם, we're tumbling, who's tumbling? דה רבי סטומלינג. על דרך הצורך להכריז עד מוסאי, that we have to say, we have to cry out עד מוסאי. שעל ידי זה מקרבים ומזהר זה מרס הגאולה, דה רבי סס, by crying עד מוסאי, we're actually bringing the גאולה closer. So the Rebbe says over here, the Yesh Loimar, that there's a great depth. Admasai doesn't only mean we, we don't tolerate the Golas. Admasai also means, Admasai, are we going to be kingless? Or, Admasai, are we going to be in a state where our Melech, our Chayos, our king is our life, is, is not visible, fully manifest in full power? As he says, in addition to emphasizing the longing, and the request, and the demand, that Mashiach should literally come right now, in a manner that we can point with our finger and say, this is Melech HaMashiach. In addition that we want that to happen, we're waiting. What's Mashiach? Basa V'dam, Melech, Basa V'dam, Kipsak Tina Rama. Like the Rambam says, he's a Yamid Melech mi Beis David. That Mashiach is a, is a physical human being who will be from the family of David. Becomes, but there's something else that Rebbe says much deeper in the Ad Masai. Yesh Pachrozezu. There is in this announcement, Gama Toichin de Inyan Achtara. Deep inside this announcement of Ad Masai, it's really also a coronation of the people coronating their king. And what does it mean coronating their king? They're giving him the Chayos to be a king. Which this causes and brings Bias David Malka Mashiach. The Rebbe says, as str- in Siv Zion, in Siv Vav, the Rebbe says, as strong as that is by every king in general, that the king needs life and the people give him their life by crowning him as a Melech and giving themselves over, expressed in both in Admasai and, be- and then eventually into Yechi HaMelech. The Rebbe says it is expressed by Mashiach, it's even more important than everyone, than all other kings. Because all other kings, he's taka their chayas. But by Mashiach, he's the very, 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 ne- the people make up the neshama of Mashiach. The Rebbe says that we know that every yid is called Mashiach. There's a pasuk. The darach koicha v'yakov refers to every yid. No, there's a pasuk that says darach koicha v'yakov, that a star will rise from Yaakov. And there's two pirusha. One pirusha is that it's referring to every Jew. Another pirusha is that it's referring to Mashiach. So the Rebbe says the explanation of that is based on Rav Nachum of Chernobyl, that both of them are true. Every single Yid has his deepest, deepest point of his Nisham is Yechid Hashem Nefesh. That Yechid Hashem Nefesh is a Nitzutz of Moshiach Tzedkeinu. Moshiach is the general, the general, um, the general Yechid of all the Jewish people. Therefore the Rebbe says, Moshiach is so dependent for his very life that we should make up his existence. How do we make up his existence? By giving him our life. How do we give him our life? Through our devotion, recognizing that we live for him, giving ourselves over, and it verbalizing it in the powerful, resonating, resounding cry of Yechi HaMelech. That's what the Rebbe said in Beis Nisan, Tavshin Memches. That, of course, is the source for what people call the whole Yechi thing, and people sometimes are uncomfortable with it. We have to realize that it's sourced in the Rebbe. I'm not saying that it's something that needs to be done frivolously and so on and so forth. But we have to realize that there is tremendous basis and there is a source and a powerful source. And so much so that the Rebbe is saying over here that in this it's dependent. Since we're looking for all the inyanim we need to do right now to give the final push, we should bear this idea in mind. Everyone should have a really, really good week, and it should be already the ultimate Yechi Melech for the whole world. Thanks for joining.